I keep getting the presentations right before lunch, and so I will get you out on time. That is my promise. Um, now, I wasn't trying to hog presentations for those that saw it yesterday. This was the one I'd signed up for, but then we were asked to do one as an operations team, so it's, it looks like I'm being hoggy. <laughs> so I'm not wearing my director of operations hat today. This is just a cool presentation idea that I'm borrowing from another conference, some stuff that, uh, that we learned a couple years ago at a University of Wisconsin conference. So I'm, I was mentioning beforehand, if I can convey this half as effectively as what I learned, Hopefully it'll be a beneficial presentation. Um, so I am an administrator here, but I've taught also uh, for a number of years, both on campus and online. And I, I wanted to just take a, I wanted to start by having you take 30 seconds or so and jot down three things that you find to be the top three attributes or behaviors of an effective online instructor. So the top three behaviors, it can be things that you're good at, it can be things that you admire from somebody else in your teaching group. You could probably fill a list of 20, but just stop at three for now. Okay, so just quickly shout out, say it loud, we're on video here, but shout outs, just a couple of your items. We'll take four or five here. Not all of your lists will be the same. Shout out. Engaged. Engaged, Engaged. yes. Communicates. Communicates, what Timely. else? Timely. Timely, good. Yeah. Responsive. So presence. Humor. Humor, funny people, our students like to be funny. Good, what else? Responsive. Responsive, good, one more. They show their personality. Personality, Jeff, you have your hand too. Brings the spiritual nature of the gospel into the box. Love it. Okay, so now what you're looking at here, this was some research done, I'll make sure I give appropriate credit here, it was 2010 research, in fact, I'll put the reference up in a second. But students were asked, they were given these 20 items, or they were given a list of items, this includes 20 of the items, and of those items, they were asked to pick the 10 that they felt were the most important for, for their online instructors. And so you've got 20 on here. Go ahead and just circle or X or mark the 10 that you think the students would have picked as the most important. So take a minute or two. This is student per per uh, perception, that's right. I'll explain the demographic of the sample and everything in a little bit. It's true, and we'll talk about that. But what do you think, the students? So for this exercise, we're going to talk more about the stuff we have control over. But there are, from the student standpoint, they don't like the class if it was designed poorly. They don't like the class if there's too much work. They don't like the class if we facilitate it poorly. Right from their perspective, they have their preferences. So that's a good that's a good clarification, though. Anybody who's watching this online, it's the same list right here on the board. I should have pulled it up a minute ago, but the same list on the board. Take another minute or so. Okay, who has seen the game show family feud? <laughs> Most of us. All right, so I need a volunteer from my left to your right and a volunteer from the other side of the classroom quickly to come up. Volunteer your neighbor if you wish, it's fine. Somebody, shove somebody up into the front. Okay, so I'm gonna explain this, it is. Okay, Tori is clearly intimidating. Need somebody to this like. <laughs> Are we just four batteries? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so let me explain what we're doing here. The answers will come from the list that you just filled out. So we have 10 answers. Um, Whatever I say, good answer, good answer. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> so let me explain a little bit about the demographics. So this was not necessarily representative, but an interesting study nonetheless. So it was only 65 students from a couple of Midwestern universities, um, mostly graduate students. So this isn't necessarily our demographic, but I think it was pretty interesting, their findings. And so the question will be, what are the top 10 most important behaviors for online instructors, if you want? <laughs> I mean, I trust you guys. Are they telling me my answer? <laughs> Yeah, so let's start ladies first. There's no buzzer, so we'll have Tori or her side of the room guest first. And if you're familiar with Family Feud, if she gets it, but then this side of the room gets it higher, then they win. If you guys get it, okay. So then you so, so, so quickly help Tori with number one. Uh, <laughs> Okay, five seconds. Oh, sorry, you guys, just pick one for now. I didn't explain that well. You're just picking one, then we'll go back to the side of the room. So pick your top one right now. I heard that one the most. So, Tori, the top one from your team. Who is responds to student questions whenever I need a response? 24 hours a day. <laughs> oh. <laughs> valiant effort. So you can have a seat, Tori. That was a valiant effort. <laughs> so Nate, all you have to do is get one on the board, and you guys start out. I actually don't know the rules if you both miss. I didn't see that, so no pressure. You're not going to miss right. Okay. Um, how much time do I have? <laughs> like five seconds. Okay, we'll go with nine. Nine. All right. <laughs> we are in the human resource wing of online, so we won't have a little head rubbing to this. Okay, so now quickly, quickly, you guys, you guys know the rules now, so you start firing them out. When you get three strikes, I probably should have marked one already, but when you get three strikes, they get a chance, and you can name them all without three strikes, and you win. So we got to do this kind of quick. So start shouting them out. So they're twice. So they will. Now you guys think if they miss all three, then you get a chance to name one and win the game. Twenty. 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 Good. You guys are doing well. What else? That was six. Twelve. Oh, did I give you the wrong one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was number six. We'll take that one. What can you do? And then number five. So wait, what's the what number now? Five. Five. Of course, it's easy to navigate. Easy to navigate. Okay, good. No team. You guys are doing well. What else? Twelve. Twelve. We agree on that? Yes. Yeah. Well. Wait, this side shouldn't be green. Arm is trying to throw you off. Get another chance. <laughs> <laughs> you guys may. You still, you may get another chance. Oh. If not, yeah, just. Did we get seventeen? Well, we that was sort of the other. What do you guys guess? Eleven. 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 No. You know what? I heard Dave, and that's a strike. All right. <laughs> you have two more. Two more strikes. I heard 15. 
No, no, no. 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 Again, to be, to be clear, you guys, before online instruction rushes me out with a pitchfork, we're not against these activities. These are just not the top 10 mentioned, right? So I want to be clear. Rob mentioned that we should not do icebreaker activities. That's not the point of this lesson. Okay, good. 18. 18. What is 18? Okay, good job. So you guys think you'll, have, you'll get a chance to steal if they get one more strike. Um, 14. 14. 14. Yes. 14. Good. Okay, you got three more to win. 16. Oh, no, we don't like those. No, we like it. No, no, we're not doing that. Number eight. Eight was said with authority. Okay. No. What was that one? All things being equal, we shouldn't lie to our students. Good. What else? Uh, two more. Two or two. Two good. Two. Am I hearing two? Two, two. two or seven. Yeah, no, seven. Seventeen's good too. Seventeen. Apple. Okay. You can cut the tension with a knife. This is exciting. All right, one more. Who's going to win? You guys are ready to steal if they miss it. Oh, my goodness. Final answer? Sure. It was not It's hard to be sure. <laughs> All right, you got it. That's good. <laughs> Thank you to Tori and Nate for volunteering or being volunteered. That was great. Okay, so as you look at this here, again, I mentioned this may or may not be representative. This would be a fascinating study to replicate with our students, but it's more I wanted to get us thinking a little bit. Um, again, grad students, very small and very small sample size, Midwestern University. So again, this doesn't mean that our students would feel the same, nor that the other activities were not valued by the students. This just happened to be the ones that they, that they selected. Um, as you look at these top 10, what words jump out at you? Are there any themes that kind of emerge? Clear, clear. Yeah, clearly, you see many times on the right. Communication or communicate to communicate it you see many times on there. Like five of them were basically the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. But just said differently or one specific thing. Because if you're saying course requirements clear, well that's the due dates, it's the topics, the goals, right. but then they separate those out as well. And this isn't the big aha from the presentation that's that I attended, but rather I thought this was helpful. It re-emphasizes some things we already know. Um, we we know that our students really excel when we can communicate expectations, right? When we can help them navigate. I had an experience, so I started teaching, before I was an administrator, I started teaching in 2009, and at that point, we didn't have all these things we have right now. There were not teaching groups, there were not OCRs, I'm getting some nods, Carolyn was teaching back then, others may have as well. And it's kind of a walk uphill in the snow both ways story, right? You know, I'm not trying to get you to feel sorry for us, but it's great to see how we've advanced, but at the time, some of the courses were really, really bumpy. And it was fascinating for me to observe how some of our instructors navigated bumpy courses pretty skillfully. And others were more like chicken little, right, to their students. Like, ah, it's not falling. You know, and then how do the students react if all of a sudden links aren't working and there's all sorts of issues. And others would say, you know what, and via you know, email or whatever communication, Hey, we realize there's a couple of issues we're having right now. I'm working through those. I'm going to stay in communication with you. Pay attention, though, to the content this week. It's fantastic. We're going to get through this together, but you're going to have a great experience. At the end of the semester, it was no surprise. The students who had the exact same experience with the course evaluated the course, let alone the instructor, evaluated the course so much more positively than those when the instructor was freaking out. It's kind of interesting. And so we have the option to clearly communicate, et cetera, notwithstanding the, the shape of the course. And the courses are much better than they used to be anyway. Um, number five, so actually I wanted to share a couple things. So some of these, as was pointed out, they have a lot more to do with other departments other than online instructors, right? So you look at, for instance, number seven. Yes, easy to navigate course, students want that. That's not really, I mean, we can help, help steer them, but we don't design the courses. Um, 
one and four, a couple of examples of kind of a joint stewardship. Yes, the way the course is designed helps a lot with the clarity, the understanding, but we can help, right, with our lesson note or with our, our weekly notes from instructor. We can help with the weekly jing. We can do certain things to point them in the right direction. Um, number five always in, interests me in that it is so frequently referenced. Uh, timely feedback, timely responses via email. How many of you have received in your comments, which just makes me smile because it just seems like it's part of our job, but how many of you get comments that, wow, she responds frequently or he responds right away to my emails? Is that, is that a theme you notice at your end of the semester um, communication? I find that interesting because I've taught a number of years on campus and you never get a, a comment saying, you know, he answers my questions when I ask him one. But, but there seems to be some type of a, right? I ask him a question in class and Brother Stewart responds. What a guy. I mean, that never happens. <laughs> but we seem to have some type of an innate fear with the online classes, right? I'm located in Virginia or in Ghana or wherever. And I hope that instructor exists out there. I'm going to go ahead and respond. And yes, this one responded right away. They really value that type of behavior. Um, so there were some unsuspected findings as well. I want to spend the last 10 minutes or so on these. So this same study asked five open-ended questions, or asked rather this question with asking for open-ended responses. I didn't say that right. You know what I mean. Open-ended question, so there's no bounded choice response. And this, to me, was the most fascinating part. The rest thus far, I think most of us intuitively had a pretty good idea that that's what comprises an effective online instructor. And as was mentioned, a lot of them were pretty similar. Some of the characteristics that surface, some of the behaviors that these students mentioned, again, were similar, responding in a timely manner, making retirements clear, requirements clear. Some of these I loved, though, and they were kind of off the radar of the researchers. Um, being empathetic, that was something that wasn't even asked <laughs> to the students with the bounded choice questions. But being empathetic, was one that unsolicited showed up from the, from the students. Uh, being positive and friendly. Now, in a, in a classroom setting, I think we all like a nice teacher, but it's pretty evident that our online instructors really want us to be positive and friendly as well. Uh, and so in this, in this presentation, they, they talked a great deal about teacher disposition, something that is understudied. There's not a lot of research about that in the online environment. Again, most of us can think back to the charismatic, the funny instructor you had during your college days or high school or whatever. But it turns out our students like that as well. Now, the medium that we convey our personality, our disposition, is different online. But the students still like it. They still expect it. They still crave that, that, type, of, that type of interaction. So what I wanted to ask right now is, why do you think that's so? And in what ways can we manifest the disposition that students, that you feel like students are looking for. I'm going to talk about that for a couple minutes. So what thoughts come to mind? Yeah. Um, I, think we're, I think, again, we're social creatures, right? And so a lot of times I think well, the students, when they go online, it's this big, scary, worldwide web thing. And actually that's something maybe back to them. It's kind of an interesting phenomenon for them. Because usually you're just pulling information from the internet. You're not necessarily getting put information that they're being pushed to you. But I think that's probably one of the reasons why a lot of students really emphasize the fact that, hey, this, this professor emailed me back and communicated. Yeah. Good. Other thoughts? Yeah, Frank. So find a way to be yourself online. I mean, it's easy in a class setting to kind of, you know, loosen up over time, be yourself, make a funny joke, do sarcasm maybe in an appropriate sense. It's hard to do that online sometimes. So find a way be that person who you are in an online setting. I like that. People can kind of sense, oh, this is who this guy really is. Really is really in that Wisconsin presentation, they even referenced using, what are they called, emoticons? Am I saying that right? That, that was even referenced as a positive. You use your smiley faces. You, that may not come across to you like professional communication, but it's okay. Students, students are okay with that. They prefer that. They want to know that we have emotion, that we're caring, that we're being sympathetic, et cetera. Tori, you had a thought. Um, when a lot of times, you know, especially in my desire to be timely with my responses, I'm just, you know, on my phone, hey, thanks for that. But, you know, oftentimes I have to pause and say, you know, this student will be happy with that extra minute I take to add a how are you at the beginning 
And uh, thanks for, again for your email at the end. It doesn't take me that long, and that five seconds yeah. a minute makes a huge difference. I like that. How many of you write emails like I do? You write the body, and then you go back and then make it nice. <laughs> like, here's the answer. Hello, how are you? Have a great weekend. You know, and, like I have to remember that because I'm, my initial order of business is answering the question, right? I think that's a great point. I saw another hand over here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was just going to say most of our classes have that initial icebreaker discussion board, introduce yourself board, and I think that sets a huge tone of positive and friendly. You're replying to each student and kind of making that personal connection so that, like you would in a class, like, yeah. you meet everyone. And how many of you go back through the, the icebreaker eight weeks later when you really feel like you know the students through assignments and through discussion boards? I haven't always done that. I think it was an idea from, from one of these conferences. And that's a fun thing, because then all of a sudden you can really make the connection now that you it's not one of 50 students that are names without faces yet, right? Yeah. Jeff. I, I tend to put a little shorter answer in the email and then tell them to call me. So here's a few thoughts, but I've got more, and it's really quick to have a five-minute conversation that's quicker than an email if you're going to give a longer email. So I give them a little bit and tell them to call, and I'll get calls a fair amount of time. And that works into my work day better than waiting to do it all at night when I get home. So it, it works for me. Yeah, and it seems to make it more personal for them. I like that. Let's go one more comment here, Tammy. Uh, I try to compliment them right off the bat, you know, for reaching out to me. So, you know, in some way, for caring enough about your grade to do this. Isn't it funny how a lot of life skills are transcendent in that, for those that are parents in here, you want to keep that line of communication open so they can come talk to you. But is it that different for the student instructor relationship? The first time you shoot somebody down in a classroom setting, they raise their hand and you're looking at your papers, you're not paying attention, you're checking your watch. We've all been there in Sunday school, right? You just kind of put your hand back down, you don't want to answer again. But is it that different if we respond somewhat tartly, or if it can be perceived that way? Maybe like Tori said, you're responding on your phone, but you have to think, wait a second, you know, how could this message be received, even though I don't intend it that way? I think because so much of communication is nonverbal that in a classroom setting, it's pretty easy to read each other. You can tell if you've kind of not answered fully the, the student's question. Or if maybe you've said something that frustrates them a little bit. That can be tougher online, right? And so it takes a little extra, little extra effort. So there was some research that they referenced in this presentation. That I, I'll end with this and we'll get out on time. But I thought it was really interesting. So they had at this university, and I forget where the presenter, I got her name here, I'll give it to her, but I forget where she teaches. It was Kathleen Sheridan, so Nash, National Lewis University in Chicago. Uh, but anyhow, they had... They had this faculty teaching online who was just renowned, renowned for the knowledge and the research in this area. So just the creme de la creme from a research standpoint. And he was going to teach an online class. And they had another facilitator who wasn't as well versed in the topic, knew enough, but was an excellent facilitator. And guess who just absolutely blew out the other one with regard to the student experience? Yeah, it was a facilitator, right? From the student standpoint, of course we have to know what we're talking about. But it's so much more important to them in how we deliver the content, that we care a great deal about them. I mean, we, we know that. We love the students. We could spend two hours just talking about how we love the students and experiences we've had. But in every way, how we convey that, that humor, that kindness, that love, even while simultaneously maintaining the high expectations, is not only what we feel like we ought to be doing as instructors in a CES institution, but it turns out that's what that really is what the students crave as well.